This is Rating Descending. Where we watch IMDb's Worst 250 movies so you don't have to. I'm Michelle St. Clair. I'm Abigail Ward. And this week we watched Prom Night. Donna's senior prom is supposed to be the best night of her life, though a sadistic killer from her past has different plans for her and her friends. Let's watch. All right, Abby. Yeah, I got a pitch. Right now, obviously, prom not a thing in Australia. We do have many high schools have a high school formal in yeah. year twelve. Some places have a, a debutante's ball. Yeah. Um, which I find very strange and mm-hmm. uncomfortable. If you went to prom, because you said it right in our outro last time that you didn't. Mm. If you went to prom. Mm. And were offered the opportunity to be accompanied by a uh, very charming and and comforting but hideously ugly uh, hunchback wizard who said as long as you let him accompany you to prom would give you in return but one wish provided that wish was related to the magic beans that he has, would you agree? That's my pitch. Uh, is that like a different pitch that I have to choose over, or is it just would I, wouldn't I? You, I guess you run the risk of um, social humiliation for bringing such a strange guest. Um, you might be, you might run into a like a. He might turn out to be like a foul genie uh, who is sort of twisting the words of your bean wish. Look, I. It's not necessarily. It's not an easy question to answer Mm. and because i'm coming at this as a 28 year i mean 18 (laughs) year old a 28 year old's perspective um and like i don't give a shit really as much as what people think of me so like the idea Mm. of getting a reward um if i brought some hideous man along who seems quite nice and the only negative is that he's hideous i wouldn't give a fuck i'd bring him but if you asked me when i was like 16 uh i don't know i don't remember the, how difficult I mean I, I do vaguely but I don't think I would take into account right now how difficult the social pressures are in mm. high school therefore I don't I think now I would say yes but if I was 16 I would probably say no wow wow <laughs> oh my fucking god you fuck you fuck that guy was, the, was the fucking king that of guy fucking bell pulls brain. off his mask yeah. Anthony Albanese. Oh. <laughs> he pulls off his mask and you're like, put that back on. That's that's important to be COVID safe. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Come on. How could you? <laughs> Mr. Albanese. Mr. Albanese, How please. could you? Put your beans away, Mr. <laughs> Albanese. I'm trying to be safe and responsible. What, 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 what would you answer to this hypothetical? Well, obviously, as the smart one, I would say yes and promptly get murdered. Listen, I didn't think you were going to pitch me this question because during the outro, you started talking about a story, but you never finished it. And I thought that's what you were leading to. Oh, oh, everyone, everyone. You know what? You know what? Everyone loves a bit of edging. But when Michelle does it on the podcast, everyone hates it. Well, my question is, did you really have that question thought out or was it something you pulled out of your ass? Both. Mm, I can't be had both. part of the can't idea. Be both. I had. <laughs> it's one or the other. I had most of the idea for that question when trying to think of something for the opening and then kind of forgot most of the details Mm. because I didn't write it down. Uh So it was a mishmash of something I had planned. A mishmash? Yeah. A mash by mish? Oh, yeah. Whoa. (laughs) I do all kinds of of mashups like that. You'll have licked your lips at that. (laughs) Here is um, Dancing Queen, but with the vocals of Green Day's American idiot. Don't want to be an American, American idiot. <laughs> uh, that's a mishmash. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. You can dance. You, what, what is it? Does, is, really is, is it no longer words. copyrighted if we mash it? <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> it's been episodes of this. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
uh, you did you go to to, to prom? Um, we had a, as I said, a debutante ball. I think we might've had like a year 12 dinner or something. I went to a private school that I had a scholarship to. So I, I had a strange oh, brag social p- position. I feel brag. like, I feel like I did not deserve it to be honest, but I still a brag. <laughs> it was an odd place being not a wealthy Should person at a wealthy person school. The epitome of a humble brag. Well, you fucking asked, man. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't ask about the scholarship. All right, I went to a Sorry, fancy school that I couldn't afford. <laughs> is that is that vague enough for you? Humble brag. Have I stripped it out? <laughs> nah, I went to a public school where people threw chains at each other. All right, a guy got meat cleaved in the arm, and that's not even a joke. I know, I know. Well, all right? Look, the distinction then is that where people threw chains at me. All right, that's the distinction between our schools. It's not that the the the, the 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 random acts of violence didn't happen. They were just more focused on on my queer poor ass. Did, did you get chains thrown at you? It's no. it's, it's fucking it's fucking relative. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking relative. It's fucking relative. <laughs> They're all chains, aren't they? <laughs> I'd certainly so say only speaking that metaphorical covered in chains. Because <laughs> I was talking in literal chains. Yeah, you know, I I had stuff thrown at me. Yeah, you know. That's yeah, what I mean, did you, you feel happy now? No. <laughs> Nah, well, turn into a bummer. <laughs> speaking of things that didn't make me happy, this week we watched uh, Prom Night. That we did. Yeah, th- I thought I might as well launch straight into it. Um, she says, putting her hands in her pockets while sitting. I couldn't <laughs> see, and it looked like she was kind of shoving your hands into I your just pants. just masturbating. <laughs> yeah. I thought I'd start that edging I mentioned earlier. <laughs> yeah, get on it. Um, yeah, no, we watched Prom Night. Have you ever seen the original Prom Night? Have you ever seen this before? No. Jamie Lee Curtis is in it. What year did it come out? The original? Yeah. 19. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a wide scope. 80. <laughs> <laughs> Saying 19 is such a safe answer. <laughs> I love it. Okay, no, 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 don't worry. Just in post, I'll, I'll cut those tickets. So- <laughs> So two years between Halloween and and Prom Night, yeah, and it was it roughly the same story um, as as the remake. Yeah, there were people at a prom who got murdered. That's, okay. That's kind that, of it. Yeah, I mean, broadly speaking, no, it's not. Who directed the original? Uh, the original was directed by uh, Paul Lynch. Who is that? Well, he's a Canadian film director and television director. Who directed? He directed Blood and Guts in 1978. Oh, a humongous in 1982. <laughs> All classics. <laughs> Flying, aka Dream to Believe, in 1986. <laughs> uh, Blindside in 1986. Bullies, also in 1986. What the fuck was this he on guy, in 1986? Cocaine. He was on cocaine. <laughs> oh my god, three movies. And then On the Prowl, 91. No Contest, 1995. No Contest 2, aka Face the Evil, in 1997. More to Love in 1999. Frozen with Fear in 2000. And The Keeper. In 2004. He really just read out the whole filmography. Yeah, well, it's a I... It's a thorough question, I guess. No, I just thorough want to answer. I just, I, just want to, I just love giving answers. Really Come on, hit me, hit me with another. Hit me with another. Okay, well, who directed this one? Well, I mean, the, the, this one was directed by Nelson McCormick. This isn't okay. part of my key details, but I can go into it now, because Nelson mean, McCormick... I just, I just want to know, like, uh, the, the differences and similarities between the two prom nights. Well, Nelson McCormick only directed one other feature film, which was called The Stepfather, which was a 2009 remake of, an, of a thriller from 1987. No, no. <laughs> and so is the initial one considered good or a classic, or is it just kind of like, eh? I think spiritually it's it's kind of, look, it's got a substantial cult following yeah. for the film's horror content and also for the film's soundtrack. This is like early slasher as well. Yeah. So like we weren't so bored of like, what if a guy had a knife? Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. This feels spiritually similar to our Black Christmas episode well, but without the rampant say, transphobia. I think that the Black Christmas episode, like the Black Christmas initial film was such a cult classic and it seems like there is a trend of remaking them in the early 2000s just really poorly. Yeah, everything we talk about, how everything is a remake... It's just it's people people weren't on it in the 2000s when they were doing it with horror because the, no. they were fucking obsessed with remaking every single horror movie ever made. And as you say, like the concept of a, a killer let loose on a 
group of teenagers with a knife like one yeah. night at some camp. What if guy had knife? It's really scary. But yeah. yeah, once you do it like three or four times, it's no longer scary. But that's, that's, but that, that's why it works when it's Halloween and it's like, this is, he's like a spirit. He's like a spooky ghost. How does this guy manage to do it and then reveal it and he just guy with knife? Yes, just guy but, with a knife, which is even scarier than spooky ghost. Yeah, but at the, yeah, cause, because Bleh. unlike spooky ghost, he man. Mm. Oh, and aren't we all? True. Um, but but this is really like, what if up front, full on, he's just a guy with a knife? Just a dude. That's still scary. Scary, scary. Guys kill people. Men are scary. But you know what's even scarier? Have you seen The Thing? Yeah. I, I don't know what was going on with that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, like, if I was getting followed home by a spooky ghost spirit, I'd be far less frightened than if I was getting followed home by a man. Yeah, me too. Even without Because I'd knife. be like... That's not happening. The spooky ghost spirit? Yeah. What if you knew for a fact it was happening? Well, then I'd be way more scared because all, in addition to being followed by a malevolent force, I'm also like my entire foundational understanding of how the world mm. works is incorrect. But there's a curiosity that comes with that, whereas what comes with a man following you is just, <laughs> oh, again? Oh. If I was followed by an evil spirit, I would go, hmm, curious. Mm, curious and curious. <laughs> oh, fascinating, <laughs> interesting. Mayhaps I perceive closer. It would be very novel, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd be like terrified. But then I would be like, you know what's really struck me in this moment? The novelty. Mm. The novelty of it all. Well, I will say in this film, when her friend gets murdered by him, like just the first girl is stabbed of yeah. the film. Mm -hmm. It was so graphic. I was like, this is too realistic, if anything. Yeah, like a I, man tackling a woman and just stabbing the shit out of her. I fully frowned a lot while watching it. Fully frowned. Fully frowned. Hey, look, Frown of disapproval. Listeners, I do I do around friends, but around <clears throat> when I'm just by myself, I'm not always an expressive gal, you know, except when it comes to a, to a displeased frown. Mm. And in that case, I did frown a lot because it was usually, I'm like, that is upsetting because it's just watching someone get stabbed. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you feel you also, uh, like i'm uh, when i listen i listen to so much true crime like so many true crime podcasts also i read an article today about how people like there's some study that came out that said that if you listen to like a massive amount of true crime podcasts you're probably disturbed maybe i am but i am so used to it and so i i, I don't tend to like get shocked by anything i hear anymore so like when i do it's like it's very particular like yeah. if i'm listening to a podcast and something makes you go oh <gasps> It's fucked. If I'm if I look like I'm getting a little further away every few minutes, that's not happening. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Just, <laughs> just trying to reach my phone. Just trying to reach my phone. <laughs> what do you What do you need your phone for? Eh? <laughs> it's just zero, zero. You know, I've listened to a no. <laughs> listen to a lot of true crime podcasts. Oh uh, yeah, no, I I'm well aware. I was just trying to put one on for you How about my favorite murder or something. Uh, okay. Yeah. Zero. Psh, no, I fuck. I don't believe you. Oh, that's fair. I wasn't telling the truth. My God. My tactic is if I just tell you exactly what's going on, that you'll spare me. I need to poopy so bad. Oh, God. Please let me go. I think you already have. <laughs> yeah, <sighs> I have fully. fully. If you let me go, I won't do it on you. Okay. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you want to hear some key details? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <too. laughs> So the key details of my poopy um, are, are corn. You no. proud of that? You mm. proud of that joke? For the proud of that? For the standard of quality <laughs> that we have of this podcast, kinda. Yeah. <laughs> when you die, I'll play that at your funeral. I think the key details of my poopy. At my, at my. So I die when you die <laughs> before me. Well, I mean, I will die at some point, but yeah, before me. Oh yeah, I'm gonna die before you. Yeah, okay. Well, well, I mean, it's because you're gonna kill me, as we just established. Yeah, you're gonna at my funeral play play <laughs> the key details to my poopy, <laughs> and is, everyone is it, will frown. <laughs> is it part of the <laughs> the way that I frown? Yeah, the thing that everyone's just gonna go like a hmm. Mm. <laughs> Are you gonna? Is it like during your speech, or is it like? Oh, at I'm not the giving wake? a eulogy. I'm just oh. putting it on and leaving. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Mic drop. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool and respectful. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. At you, at your funeral, <laughs> I'm gonna fight every motherfucker there, yeah. and I'm gonna tell them once I beat them one by one that I'm the reason that you're in the fucking ground. Oh my god. So key details. This came up to this night. Yeah. Great. What a good little cut yeah. in point. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We haven't been silly in a while. Yeah, we have. All right, that's true. That's a lie. <laughs> this came out in 2008. <laughs> I've had a sad few days. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't project onto this podcast. <laughs> 
What are we here for if not to project onto this podcast? <laughs> That's all it is. Get to the key details. It's us talking into the void, <laughs> hoping that someone will shout a response. Why am I begging you to get on with the podcast? It's usually <laughs> the other way around. Do the key details. This movie came out in 2008. It was directed by Nelson McCormick, famed for his remake of The Stepfather. <laughs> Starring Britney Snow from Pitch Perfect. I, I actually really like Britney Snow. I, I actually think, do. I think she she's wasn't great in this. Fun but... in Pitch Perfect, playing the character who has a lot of genuine romantic chemistry with Anna Kendrick. Well, I loved her because I loved Hairspray when it came out in 2007. Oh, she's great. And in she Hairspray. was so she was such a standout in it that like every time she comes up, I'm like, oh, Britney Snow. Also, surprisingly, this star is also starring Idris Elba. That was a shock. Yeah. That came out of nowhere. Fully Did not. Fix One of my notes is just. Elba? Yeah. <laughs> this I, was 2008. He just was probably wasn't as big a name at oh. that point. I mean, Luther hadn't started. Sure. When I think of Idris Elba's filmography, I certainly think of Discernment. Discernment? He's he's in a lot of bad movies. Right. He's in a lot of very mediocre movies, I would say, actually. It's like, is Discernment a film I haven't heard of? No. Being yeah. discerned, like Yeah, I, yeah. A guy just seems like he just takes every job he's offered mm -hmm. a, a little. Fair enough. Budget for this, 20, 20 million. Oof. Uh, but the box office was 57.2. Oh, so I can okay. see why they kept remaking these. Like, why not? That's that like such a bummer. 27. Well, no, it's not 27. That's like 17 mil profit. If I could make $17 million. Yeah. I would. Yeah. I, I would too. <laughs> I would. That's I, how this works, right? One I guy would. just. <laughs> I would do it. Of course. Wait, wouldn't that be $37 million profit? Well, yeah, but. I'm trying to think of like with the, like with the budget. There's also then the ad yeah. spend, which is usually like a similar amount, okay, so forty. So, so then yeah, yeah. forty to fifty-seven is like seventeen. You know. Yeah. In terms of returning actors, Ming Na Wen was in the opening of this. I know. Mm. I love Ming Na Wen. I love her so much. I love her because she was June in the Joy Luck Club. However, disappointingly, this does make her an all-star because she was no. of course in Street Fighter. No. Also, Idris Elba, now a rating descending all star what because was he was in again? Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. Fuck. Also, Kellen Lutz is making another appearance from Twilight New Moon and The Legend of Hercules. Oh, my. Kellen Lutz. Yeah. Who'd he play? He, oh, God. Well, you can't ask me to remember their names. They're all just generic white teenager names. Was he the boyfriend of the homecoming queen? That yeah. The girl that wanted he, he, to be? He was that guy. He was the guy with the lips, the you know? The evil-looking blonde dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to do his lips, but... He it, gave a shocking performance. I, yeah, but at the same time, I noticed his screen presence more than any of the other teens except for Britney Snow. It, so. was, the, it was the lips. It was just the lips. It was just the lips. Um, and if Jonathan... Sh Jonathan Sheech... Jonathan Skeech... Jonathan... Jonathan Sheech... Was in Vice, and he played the the baddie. I'm pretty sure. Who's he, Jonathan Sheets? Who do you play in this? The baddie. Oh, the baddie. Yeah. Okay. He, so he just has Benton. a knack for playing baddies. Yeah. Well, I don't know who he was in Vice. Oh. I'm saying he was the baddie in the. Oh. Let's do that again. Jonathan Sheets, who played Fenton, the baddie, mm -hmm. was in Vice. Ah. Oh. Yeah. So that's four all stars. Three of them new all stars. Oh my goodness. <sighs> yeah. Huge. Let me do the full overview. Okay. So that we can get the audience on board, you know? We never really talk about what our format's for. I think about, like, what if this is someone's first episode? I don't know why you kept listening after the opening 10 if this is your first episode, but Oof. the overview, so that you guys know what the fuck we're talking about. Mm -hmm. High school freshman Donna Keppel returns home one evening to find her father and younger brother have been murdered. She hides under her bed where she then witnesses her mother. I feel like I'm falling into the ABC newscast rhythm where she, she then witnesses her, her mother, mother stabbed, to, stabbed death to death by Richard Fenton, her, her, her former Back biology teacher <laughs> who had become you, obsessed Rich. with Donna. Three years later, Donna lives with her aunt and uncle and prepares for senior prom. Meanwhile, Detective Wynn, that's Idris Elba, who was, on the, who was on the original case, learns that Fenton has just escaped prison. A classic. Mm. Knowing he will come for Donna, Wynn assembles a team and arrives at the prom hotel to watch Donna, not wanting to disrupt her important prom experience. Fenton begins killing the hotel employees and Donna's friends as he circles in on a still unaware Donna. Eventually, Wynne realizes that the people inside of the prom hotel are getting killed and orders the hotel evacuated, whereupon Donna narrowly avoids Fenton and is sent home. 
However, she is followed home by Fenton, who is about to kill her before Wynne shoots him dead. The end. The end. And he kills Bobby, her boyfriend. Yeah, he kills Bobby. Bobby the boy. Bobby B. Bobby B. Uh, sorry, he kills Bobby B. He kills right. most of her friends. He kills Lisa, the the he gets him. the friend who is going to be the homecoming queen. Mm-hmm. Um, who, by the way, one of the fucking things in my notes, she gets killed, right? Um, like around like the middle, I would say, because she realize she like recognizes Fenton and then tries to run away, and then she like falls down the stairs, and then and Fenton like hunts her in a basement, and it's like it's very upsetting. Yeah. After that point, her boyfriend. Also, I don't know why she didn't tell him or anything. Um, but after that point, her boyfriend is on screen. What feels like every sec, every third scene, and basically it's just like, has anyone seen Lisa? Lisa. And they usually go no, Lisa. or they go like, um, fucking Katie's yeah. missing, and it's yeah. like. Lisa's missing. No one cares. Yeah. And the whole movie repeatedly about the fact that his fucking girlfriend was yeah. murdered. No one like sat him down and said like, what does she look like? When did you last see her? What did she say? Yeah. Where did she go? Like the cops are just like, Meh. this white girl's missing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this white girl's in trouble. Contextually important. Shit. Both Lisa and her boyfriend are black. Yeah. And it's, it's so weird the way it's he so keeps, sad. where's Lisa? And they're like, um, Katie died. And it's like, Lisa died. You also find out that Lisa Ronnie, her boyfriend, was fully trying to propose to her while they were, like, trying to have sex right yeah. before she realizes that the bad guy is after Donna and she gets up and runs out and is then killed. Um, but, yeah, he's, like, going to propose to her. And when he's crying at the end, I'm like, that that man, his life is just fucked for the next it's couple of years. Fucking ruined. Yeah. <laughs> How fucking traumatizing. And everyone else was like, oh, my God, what happened to Katie? Oh, my God, Donna. Which, like, you know, still bad for Donna and mm. stuff. But, like, someone... Give him a Who's fucking Katie? shoulder. I, I said I pulled Claire? out Claire. Yeah. yeah, I pulled out Katie as just a random name. Claire, yeah. I was pretty actually pretty close. Mm. <laughs> Claire's not bad. Um, yeah, but it yeah, it's fucking wild. <sighs> Look, I think if this movie's guilty of anything, apart from mostly just relying on a lot of jump scares and doing the thing that I hate in the first 40 where instead of being interesting, it just keeps having people be behind someone's shoulder and then they go, oh. <gasps> I'm so proud of you, honey. I think You've the, come so far. The biggest problem with this movie that I have is the fact that this is set in and filmed in 2008 and clearly it thinks it's 1996. Why do you reckon? Well, there's a point where, where she's like coming down for for prom and then the boyfriend's there and then they're playing what feels like a very like late 90s rock track like old rock track i that's so i found it was like chronically mid 2000s because okay. of all of the pop punk emo -y music that they kept playing mm. it was like just a, i don't know it, it was along vaguely the lines of like and tonight we will dance until we fall in love and it's like all these kids bopping around and they all have like hair extensions in and the horrible fringes and the, yeah, the really fringes, yeah. jagged cut like I feel like every girl had that haircut in 2008, so I was kind of like, oh, this, is okay. such a, this is such a nostalgia piece. For me, it was scanning as more like, if anything, if at the latest, 2004, but I'm, I'm, really? I'm with you. I'm this with you. Very, yeah. it, they almost reminded me of my like big, like older cousin Lucy. I feel like she looked exactly like that in 2008. That was the style. So I was a bit like, oh, I get it. You get it? I can't believe that even post-punk, post-punk, pop-punk, even like, pop punk infiltrated like mainstream culture in that way i was almost yeah. like i can't believe these kids are dancing to that it was like the main genre at the time yeah like on the radio and stuff i feel like what i remember on the radio was wasn't pop punk it was like justin timberlake which they reference and rihanna was huge mm -hmm, mm -hmm. fergie uh -huh. massive well, that's why, that's kind of why I was like, by 2008, I feel like it was displaced in like its mainstream moment. Uh, you know, if you go earlier 2000s, that's when you get like peak of fucking Blink-182 yeah. and Green Day. And like, True. that's when pop punk's really like, this is the radio dominance. Yeah. You know? I love that the pop punk that they chose for this film wasn't anything recognizable. No. They couldn't um, afford it. They that. couldn't Jesus. afford it. Exactly. <laughs> it wasn't like they were using Blink or even All Time Low. It was just unrecognizable trash but it was it was sweet it was sweet yeah and they did use some silver sum pickups mm. in at the beginning of the film oh was that in the very opening because i i wrote it as i wrote it a note down i know it's almost hack but this music intro is kind of fun no it was the bit where they're at the sh this the barber shop together oh, they're at, right, like right. they're getting their hair done they're playing like the famous one by silver sum pickups the most 
popular one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their most popular one that we both know off the top of our lips. <laughs> yeah, we're both singing it. We both know the same name of it, so we'll say it at the same time. In in three, two, one. Lazy bing, something. Lazy. La- bing, bing. <laughs> I didn't even say anything. I just said bing. Bing bing. <laughs> bing, bing. <laughs> bing bing. Bing the, the Silver Sun pickup song. Bing bing. Bing bing. Is my favorite. Um, by the way, there was, it's because we're already on the topic of the opening. Yeah. What are, what are you doing? You, why are you fondling yourself? <laughs> my like the the area between my tits is so itchy all of a sudden. <laughs> And I have such a fucking, like, super-duper strength bra on. I really had to, like, reach up my shirt and then down my top, down into my bra, and I'm just scrubbing away. <laughs> it's just going in for that healthy scrub. Oh, I felt so good. Scrub. You know, when I was growing up, my my mom knew this one guy, Craig, who She wrote... only knew one guy. <laughs> she only knew one guy. You know, um, but he was, he was a fun guy. He used to be, well, I guess he still was. He was like a, a musician, but in like a cool band. And then was because he was now in his like late twenties, early thirties, um, transitioning into making music for, for children as yeah. like, like writing music for it. Not like performing it wiggle style. And I remember there was this one in particular, this fucking about cleaning yourself. And it was pretty catchy. I still think about it. Scrub a dub dub. Get in the tub, you dirty and smelly so. Scrub, scrub, scrub. Oh, that's a little bit of a reuse. <laughs> Fuck Craig. <laughs> Fuck, no, I couldn't think of a different thing. All right, well, <laughs> never mind. You were so keen on it when you started singing. I don't know, it just seems yeah, like. you fucking hate it. <laughs> seems like, could you maybe use more synonyms <laughs> or something? Well, I loved it, Craig. <laughs> I loved it. There's nothing wrong with repetition. It's the best way to get kids to learn and remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now they'll definitely remember the word fucking scrub, all right? Yeah, for half your lyrics are scrub. Claude and I just speaking of kids' songs. Sure, that's night, what we were talking about. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's what I prefer to talk about. The other night, Claude and I were in bed and we went on this, like, absolute rampage, just going onto YouTube and finding every single, like, kids' show theme song. And fuck Postman Pat slaps. Yeah. It really does. And I know, like, you know, no one forgets Postman Pat, but when you really rewatch that title sequence, you're like, oof. Mm-hmm. No better show. I mean, Thomas the Tank Engine fucks pretty no. hard. Oh. No. I just. No. Mean, I thought Ringo really hit it with that one. No. Doesn't have a little black and white cat. Meow. Not with that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> and also, his van is so comically small. So red, I guess, I guess so it kinda, shiny. Like, when I think about particularly the small. real life comparison between someone like post, a postman and a van, it's tiny. It, it, it's, it comparatively, he is fucking enormous compared to this van. He could get a lot more work done if his van was any bigger. <laughs> yeah, he probably cannot fit much post in there. <laughs> they begged aren't. him to get a bigger van <laughs> Pat, just because he's not hitting his KPIs. You, you have to. You'll take less trips with a bigger van. We've asked you again repeatedly. Please don't bring your cat to work. You please don't bring your cat to work. It is a menace. It kills birds. It, it people have allergies. Scratching out the packages. It chewed a lot of the letters open. Just yeah. please don't bring Jess. Also, you have invoiced us every month for a chronic neck massage because of your neck pain, and I'm telling you, you won't stoop so much in a taller van. <laughs> Pat, you, you have to get it together. <laughs> also, Pat, you don't need to work early in the morning. Before the day is beginning, all right? You're on the afternoon shift today. We didn't ask you to come in this morning. Most people get their mail while they're at work. Mm. It's fine. You don't have to get there beforehand. We've got other guys covering the AM shift. We've asked you repeatedly, start at 12. (laughs) Yeah. If if anything, you're making more problems. Pat thinks he's a really happy man. He's a loose unit. He's crazy. Of course he's a, of course he's happy. He doesn't have any rules. He doesn't care about anyone except But that doesn't yeah, that doesn't mean he doesn't live in a world where there is rules. The way that you went off Craig's song, now I'm off Postman Pat. You're well, off Postman Pat? Yeah, yeah, I'm off it. What? <laughs> I'm off. You were hard in on Postman Pat. Now you're off it. Totally off it. You're getting, what a cunt. You're getting home. You're yelling at Claude. <laughs> nah, we're over this. Nah, he's, I don't he's just that about to, shit to oh, me. Oh, babe, I'm just about to. This is what he sounds like. Oh, babe, I'm just about to put on Postman Pat. <laughs> we watched Pep, an episode of Peppa Pig the other night. Why? We just thought, we're like, what's it like? Can't what? remember. I never really watched it as a kid. Oh. We watched an episode about guess... Pepper's grandfather pl- flying, pl- flying, uh, flying little planes. In your family, you're the younger of your generation. Yeah. In my family, I'm the oldest of my yeah. generation by quite a few years. Well, Pepper Pig started in 2004, amount, really. and I would have been nine, turning ten, and I was just a bit too old for it by then. I feel like I was kind of like, oh, it's Pepper Pig. Yeah, but between my younger sister and then my cousin, yeah. I consistently call a niece. Yeah. You know. 
Well, so I just love that some of these acclaimed British actors who voice on Peppa Pig have to go like, hello, Peppa. <laughs> no, they get <laughs> Frank Welker in just for the oinks. <laughs> <laughs> Where were we with prom night? Um, look, I wanted, to, I wanted to ask you about one thing and then I had a scene I wanted to talk about okay. one thing. At the beginning, when she's getting ready, there's a whole bit where she pulls out her anxiety medication mm. and then puts it back, which mm. I think is kind of very, like, it's definitely for us that she does that, not mm. for her. Mm. And then her m- aunt... Her, Come, aunt, her yeah. aunt comes in and is like, are you not taking your anxiety medication? Mm. Which is very polite to ask it as a question because she fully just watched her not take mm. her anxiety medication. Um, and she's like, no, no, not for a few days. I really just want to feel this. I want to feel tonight. And I, I just, that doesn't come back. You want to feel your anxiety tonight? That's so weird. Yeah. That's mm. also, that's a weird stance on medication. I, I. You know, anti-anxiety and anti-depression medication can be like a complicated relationship, but what a weird thing to put in your movie if it's not really part of it at all. <laughs> Is that why she has bad dream look, later? I understand. Look, I was on antidepressants last year. That did numb me out. I understand wanting to take a break just to see if it, if it helps your mood. I don't think it'd be worth it for just prom. Like yeah. if you're just doing it for prom. That's the come down. And she, also she's got incredible trauma. Yeah. Incredible. She watched her mother getting stabbed. I would take any antidepressant or drug to make me to make yeah. sure that I don't have to go through the excruciating trauma and nightmares around my mother's death, my whole family's death. But she wanted to go off it for prom. That's part of the point. And also, her thing said to take one. You got to wean, baby. She, you got to wean. She stopped taking a few days. She's, She's going to feel withdrawals. sick. She's going to feel a little dizzy. <laughs> like, oh my god, I'm so fucking nauseous at this thing. <laughs> yeah, so just really not feeling well. Dude, I remember when I accidentally couldn't <laughs> take my depression for like five days. That like I felt like I was in a moving vehicle. I yeah. felt like I was getting a like, vertigo. It was horrible. Well, that's because I was driving you. I was yeah, like, can was. somebody help Abby? And I was can like, somebody please help let Abby? me out of this car. <laughs> please, I'm not stopping until <laughs> somebody can help. <laughs> <laughs> that five day road trip. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty funny. Um, pretty good time. There was, there was also, look, you know, one thing I've missed f- from our like recent stint of particularly bad movies. Tell me, it's describing a scene, and there's this one fucking moment. <laughs> there's this one fucking moment in this one fucking yeah. scene that was so funny. It's yeah. early in the prom where Idris Elba has. We got to talk about the logic of this, by the way. <laughs> uh, where Idris Elba has gone. Oh, sorry, her. Uncle has said to Idris Elba, oh, but she's made so much progress. Obviously, that would be all taken away if her prom is disrupted, you know, because of this. So don't disrupt her prom, please. Uh, Having her friends murdered will absolutely be more disruptive to her recovery. Also, like, I understand that's a, a chance and a risk and he didn't know it would happen. But also, like, if I was her... And I got home from prom and they were like, hey, sweetie, just to let you know, like nothing bad had happened, but they were like, we found out tonight that he's like been let, like he's escaped. I would have been like, why didn't you come get me? Like, yeah. that's really scary. I feel, I feel so unsafe. Now that I think about that prom, it's already marred because I was, I probably, maybe I was in danger the whole time and I didn't know. Like, you can't escape the fact that this will disturb and upset her. So yeah. just tell her ASAP. If well, I was the uncle, I would have been like, let's go get her. Yeah. If I was the uncle, none of those kids would have died. I would have been yeah. a fucking hero. Yeah, you would have. You know, you, the fucking terrorists hope you weren't on 9 11. <laughs> <laughs> did, did I tell you that you did? 9-11? <laughs> no, can I just... Uh, I don't know if I've told you this story. And either way, I want to tell it on this podcast. Okay, sure. But I'm going to omit some names because I shouldn't mention them. Yes. But I used to work with a guy at a company. Wow. And I barely knew him. Scandalous. I know. I uh, barely knew him, but we were in, like, training, and they had asked some big group question about what... If you could do one thing, if you could go back and change one thing, what would you change? And everyone was like, oh, I would go oh, yes. here and I would do that and I would see this thing, all these personal things. And then they get to this guy and he says, I would have stopped 9 11. <laughs> Fully serious. Fully serious. And like the 30 of us just sitting there on the Zoom call, just sit in a moment of silence and someone goes, all right, next. <laughs> Uh, oh, on the one hand, I I almost don't want to fault the guy, but I also gotta say, you're not you're not playing the game right. No, you're not. And I just love that every single person's answer. People would talk about it and like they would explain, and people would like you know give their opinion on that answer. But with his, it was just let's move on immediately. Yeah. If you could have changed one thing, what would it be? Nine eleven. 
Probably the Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, go on. Talk about how you broke your ankle skiing one time, huh? <laughs> oh, <laughs> fucking simps. <laughs> Can't believe you. <laughs> think about the lives at stake here. Uh, I think uh, about that guy regularly. Yeah, I think about it. I think about it all the time because I feel so lucky that I've never been asked that question in a group scenario. Well, now you know the best answer you could possibly give. It's 9-11. It's 9-11. I just love this man's brazen confidence. I love it too. I've never met a woman as confident <laughs> as any man. I've, I've met, met one. Oh, you've met one? Abigail Ward. Me. Hey. Abigali. Abigali. <laughs> Abigali. <laughs> Uh, just for the listeners' sake, that's an inside joke in our old place. She was listed on one of our utilities as Abigali incorrectly. Yes. Also, when I was working at JB and store, my name tag was Abilgail. <laughs> Abilgail. People struggle with my name. It's not an it's, uncommon it's name. It's not. It's just got too many vowels and people are like. Bleh. It's. It hasn't got that abnormal amount of it's vowels. It's got four. Yeah. I, Oh, only because it starts with one. It barely counts if it starts with a vowel. <laughs> that, that's not true. <laughs> a vowel at the beginning barely that counts. That is not true. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> well, now that I think come about on. it. Come on. No, no, I've still got more vowels than you. Yeah. I've got you I've got idiot. two in my foot. No, three. three. Fucking hell. Three. 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 Three vowels. Um, anyway, so I was talking about this one scene where where Idris Elba decides that the life of this one blonde lady is more important. So it's like, yeah, there's a killer on the loose, but we don't want her to get upset, so we'll just look at her a bit. Meanwhile, killer's off killing people, as you'd expect. Yeah. You know, because they're like, make sure he doesn't leave. He is pretty prompt. He, like, sends out guys to monitor the prom and her home. Well, yeah. He's pretty prompt as soon as he does get the call. Yeah. He's not really doing a good job at looking in the place where they suspect he is so much as making sure that people are outside able to see if he leaves. Mm. And I feel like they should at least be looking in the building where they reckon he is. Are they not? I'm pretty sure they are. He stations people outside and then when he gets a team, he walks in. He's sort of... there's he, The killer gets away with killing many people in this movie mm. because he's completely un, uh, un, un, unfiltered. He's, he's unfiltered. Blaming the cop but not blaming the killer. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, that's me. Wow. To, to, with the, I watched some like fucking Republican ad that was literally like, next time you you think you, you was that, that you want to defund the cops, call a crackhead. Call a crackhead. <laughs> I love that. That's my that's my real stance. <laughs> <laughs> next time you want to call the cops, don't call a crackhead. Will do. They'd probably be more helpful. Um, anyway. It's in the prom, you know, it's doing the classic, we're setting up the relationships, oh my god, it's, you know, so the boring bit of the movie. Um, and this just, this incredible exchange of dialogue where, you know, they're slow dancing, Donna and the, and the, and Bob, Bobby B or mm. whatever his name was. Bobby B's Robert De Niro, isn't it? It's no. just, he's just Bobby. <laughs> he we don't know his surname. Someone's Bobby B. I don't know who Bobby B is. All right. So Robert De Niro would be Bobby D. Oh, <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. Yeah, I saw you try to glance over that one. <laughs> Fucking correction, police. <laughs> <laughs> Thought you'd get away scot-free, did you? Whoa, come on. <laughs> I just think, I don't know. I don't. Maybe you're making it up. I don't know at this point. Someone, someone out someone there. Out there. Bobby oh, B. I'm sure there is a Bobby B. But I don't it's, know if there's a famous not, Bobby B. It's not Cannavale. It's not De Niro. Come on, it's one of the Roberts, though. Do you want me to look it up? No, come on, play with me. Are you in the Bobby that B we'll space. find that there is no famous no, no, Bobby there is. B. It's 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 because it's like it's Robert Belostomy Bag. Fuck. <laughs> the only thing that came up was Robert Baratheon. Yes. But that's not Bobby no, B, no. Michelle. <laughs> that is who I'm thinking of. No, it isn't. I've been watching a lot of TikToks about Game of Thrones recently, and people in the fandom affectionately call him Bobby really? B. That is literally who I'm thinking of. It's Robert Baratheon. What? Yeah, Bobby B. Go. Okay, we figured it out. That's who Bobby B is. I'm still not willing to 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 concede. I'll fucking show you the TikToks, No, I'm man. seeing it. He's not a celebrity. He's a fictional character. He's a, he's a celebrity in my heart. Yeah. Look, Game of Thrones was the biggest fucking thing to me for like five years. We gotta stay on track. So, when she's dancing with she's, Bobby. She's dancing with Bobby B. Why am I pulling you in this episode? <laughs> What's going on? It's my episode Do you too. always live in this state of frustration? Yes! Wow! Yes! <laughs> Do you get why I'm so angry and tense all the time? No. 
I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a you thing. Okay. I'm having a great time. Okay. Yeah, you're right. It is It is kind of a me thing though, isn't it? Bobby slow dancing. <laughs> Bobby slow dancing. <laughs> It, yeah, I have. So, I'm having so much fun doing this. I Bobby, get why you do it. Bobby slow dancing. Bobby slow dancing with Donna, right? Mm-hmm. And she's like, "Thank you." He's like, "For, for what? what? <laughs> for tonight? For tonight? For everything?" Her voice is particularly yeah, high in that it is. scene. Thank and then you. he's like, "You're welcome." And then that's just as the camera has swooped behind him, and like the most obvious ADR of the entire movie, and he goes. I am pretty awesome. Yeah. And, then, and then they both chuckle. <laughs> Wait, why add that yeah. to that moment? They do have a fairly wholesome relationship, but it is also completely vacant, you know? <laughs> He's like, this is why we're good together. You know, he, they always say the perfect thing to one another. They're like, hey, I'm here to support you, okay? I don't think you should go to that college. You got into Brown with a scholarship. I would never be able to forgive myself. And then when she's upset, he's like, hey, I'm there for you, babe. I love you. Like, love it's just this babe. strange, absent dialogue between the two of them. Yeah. He, he, I was glad when his throat got cut. They are two teen... Whoa. Oh, my God. Adding that to my file is Abby <laughs> Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> Cons. She nice sometimes. <laughs> Pros. Likes it when Bobby B's throat slit. <laughs> Rose likes to frustrate Michelle. Cons is empathetic of the fact that she uh, frustrates Michelle. <laughs> okay, there we go. He's able to, is self aware enough to acknowledge she frustrates Michelle. Yeah. Therefore, must understand at some point empathy. <laughs> Human emotion and empathy. Yes. <laughs> but maybe it's a front. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, my throat's really sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> really I ate a bunch of- <laughs> Ooh, that titillated me i ate a bunch of almonds that your darling girl from brooke made before we started recording and they were so good but they've made my throat really dry sorry <laughs> just ate a bunch <laughs> of almonds <laughs> <laughs> just ate a bunch of almonds i'm not gonna kill you <laughs> oh, sorry almonds <laughs> Look, there wasn't like a standout moment in this film for me because it was all, it was actually this film was kind of better than a lot of the horror films we watch. Like it was actually more fun than yeah. say like eleven, eleven, eleven or some bullshit. You it's, know, it, it wasn't trying to be smart; it was just trying to be commercially successful, and I I can appreciate that. It, it's crazy how bad this movie is for being so appreciably better than so many of the other yeah, movies we watch. Truly, but I, I will say the thing I didn't like, and I wrote this down <laughs> at one point. It was like the fourth of the teens just getting fully stabbed yeah. and us watching it. I it just wrote down stabbed this... the same way. Yeah, with just a knife. Mm. I just it prompted me to write down this movie is not very nice. Well, yeah, I do have to say maybe we were just spoiled by all of the Jason films, <laughs> considering that every death is something new, new and unique. Like yeah. clearly the writers its own like. Well, she can't just get her throat cut. She can't just get decapitated. She can't just have her head plunged in liquid <laughs> nitrogen. She can't just be thrown down an incinerator. We've done all of this before. We need something. She gets killed by an electric guitar. <laughs> like yeah. we are spoiled with stupid deaths in this podcast. So to watch a film where everyone just gets stabbed, you are a bit like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It's like, oh, you stabbed him, and you, oh, you stabbed her. Oh, also, you stabbed him. What's with the ending? Like, I, I don't yeah, understand. I'm like, so glad. Just, I feel like what happens is that in the end, Idris Elba's character shoots him multiple times, multiple times, right as he's about to kill her. He dies. He picks her up. Her aunt and uncle are at the door crying, and Idris Elba holds her, and he says, it's over. It's over. And then it's just over. Importantly. And we talk a lot about how we like when films end quickly. Yeah. That was too quick. I was like, whoa. No, I liked that that's where it was over. I will say that, importantly, after... He's shot and stuff. There's also what feels like the same, like droney violin and tinkly piano, uh, the to go, like cathartic music to go with the it's over. Which I, is it just me? That's the end of like 30 different movies yeah, in the 2000s is, is to is. have the like the violin tinkly music. <laughs> tinkly music and then the it's, it's over. over. And then you have like one Which wide shot. Now. Yeah. And then you go to credits. Yeah, fully went to credits so quickly I was not ready for it. <laughs> like again, I love a quick end. Like I love the end of Dog Day Afternoon where Sonny gets oh, sh- yeah. spoilers. Sonny gets shot in the back of the head. Al Pacino gets arrested. He's like looking at this hostages getting taken out of the car. And you just linger in his face and then it's over. 
Yeah. And it's like you see like the fucking car park of the, the, the runway around him yeah. and then the credits start going, There's, great. The 70s because, knew how to fucking do it, man. Yeah, because the film drove everything home throughout the film, but this didn't. And so you did want a bit of a buffer, now, I thought, right You had to, right keep, you had to keep thinking about it. Mm. You, the, the, that last 20 minutes that used to be five minutes, but mm. now it's 20 minutes in modern movies, you had to fill that in in your head and you could enjoy it, yeah. have a good time. Now, every fucking third act is 40 minutes long and they really need to over-explain every part of the ending. But I would have just liked, because you know what I thought was going to happen? I thought there was going to be some tie-in, you know, like the homecoming queen, that like the, the bitch, Car- Carly or whatever, mm-hmm. Carly who organizes the, the prom. Yeah. And she wants to be homecoming queen, but Lisa, Donna's best friend, is up for it. And then she realizes that Lisa was going to be homecoming queen. Like they never gets announced, but she sees the paper mm. and she like rips it up being like, can't believe this. I thought she would at the end like tell Ronnie or something like she was the homecoming queen and and because she's now dead like I I have kind of rekindled like I don't know I've like I've, I've figured out my shit and I I don't hate her like I can't believe she's dead I'm so sad that I don't know I thought there would be some resolution there and then also a resolution between her and Bobby in college but no it's just over it's over it doesn't matter it's because what you're missing is those aren't about what if a guy had a knife yeah true right. True. On that note, do you want to hear some trivia? Yes. IMDb trivia. I have a handful of pieces of trivia that generally come in two flavors. There's like, oh yeah, this is kind of trivia. And then there's people pointing out the many, many, many plot holes and continuity errors in this. So uh, for one, aside from the title and concept of teenagers being stalked by a killer at, a pro- at prom, this film shares no connection to the original prom night. <laughs> okay. Oh, this, this one was interesting, though. During the scene at the hair salon, the original Myers house from the original Halloween can be seen outside the window Whoa. in a nod to Jamie Lee Curtis being in the original prom night. Whoa. Also, just, yeah. you've just reminded me. Yeah. Highlight moment. The bit where she's at home after the prom, she's in her bedroom with Bobby and he's like Bobby taking B. care of her and then they fall asleep or whatever. The movie that they're watching on TV is can't hardly wait that's what they were watching i thought it was can't hardly he's wait saying like I, I i could only tell by the dialogue because I, I don't think i saw it at any point but he was being like it's the bit where preston myers is talking about i fucking love can't hardly wait it's like my favorite late 90s teen film because i just grew up with it and i love it and i think it's really smart and funny and preston myers is talking about how mandy is only he's like talking about how it's a sign that he should tell amanda that he loves her and it's it's a great movie everyone go watch it it's beautiful and also it's yeah, it has some elements that age poorly, but for a late '90s teen movie, pretty good. I don't think it's aged too poorly. No, no, that's what that's exactly yeah. what I'm saying. I don't think there's anything compared like, to like ho- oh, many other like Revenge of the Nerds being like on reflection, like oh, this is just a movie about aggravated fucking sexual assault. Yeah, yeah. I, I, the whole thing is that like the the bully in it who is problematic starts he gets completely beaten down and he starts crying and he's like no one fucking likes me man he really connects with the nerd and then the next day he's like i don't fucking know you nerd but like it's this great insight into how fucking fragile he is yeah anyway um uh nelson mccall <laughs> sorry i just remembered this nelson mccormick had done extensive research into proms going as far back as where and when the first prom was ever held in american history Ooh. Um, compiling detailed portfolios for the cast and crew, which had an introduction on the origin of the prom and what it represents. However, writer J.S. Cardone, when going over what would be the titular prom with McCormick, ultimately decided on a prom which, apart from the music and dancing of the Bridgeport seniors, was beyond the scale or budget of a standard American prom. Yeah, what was with the prom in this film? Oh, you just thought it would be cool. Like, they have a red carpet. Who's clamoring to get photos of them as they, they're coming? They rent a hotel. Yeah. Which they had limos. Apparently hotels also specifically generally don't give rooms to prom goers. Also, apparently it was a very historic hotel, according to the film. And again, when they arrive, there's a group of people yelling, trying to get photos. Who yeah. was that group of people? <laughs> Wait, yeah. Who what was that? Fuck? Who were the I people? I was like, is it parents? No, the parents would be at home saying, have a great night, honey. Who? <laughs> who were the fucking? Who was that? The the Ratsy trying to <laughs> the pup pup Ratsy. The Ratsy. <laughs> the Ratsy trying to get photos of these. That's what we call it in the business. Teenage girls. Yeah. At prom. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> or teenage boys? Oh, d- oh you well, don't that's know better. their proclivities. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So just fucked. The bad guy is like a teacher that was in love with Brittany Snow's character. Yeah, I, I mean, because he's like not only is he a murderer, he's also a pedophile. But I think the movie says it's bad. I think so. I think so. 
<laughs> Does it say anything? I'm pretty sure after Idris Elba shoots him, he was like, I get it, but the killing was too far. <laughs> 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 and me, every time I watch this movie, I'm just shaking my head so that uh, everyone knows I disapprove. Yeah. Oh, this killing and and the pedophilia, both of it too. Both of it too. Oh, I hate all <laughs> aspects of what this man represents. <laughs> um, you're funny. Oh, I fucking hope so. Hey, miss, you're funny. Thanks. Wow. <laughs> Uh, despite being one of the few slasher films rated PG-13, I, I never know what that fucking is. Um, what do you mean? Is it, I, it, it sounds like it's like their, because we, we have, have PG-13. PG no, 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 we have PG and it's, it's not the same. Their PG is more like our M, but with age restriction. But our M is 15. I know. Is their M not 15? They don't have an M. I swear we have PG-13. When I was growing no, no, up, I remembered G, PG-13, M, no. M-A-R. It's G, PG. Which is still meant to be, like, for kids, but, like, if there's a spooky goat, like, don't yeah. just put it on for your kid unsupervised or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then M is recommended for above the age of 15, yeah. but, you know, you can, you, it's your own discretion. Then but also MA, you're not allowed to see a film that is M in cinemas if you're not 15. Well, MA is res- is the re- hard restricted one. M was restricted too, was it not? No, it's certainly just recommended. Really? But a lot I of cinemas like don't let down. a lot of cinemas don't as a policy don't yeah, let yeah, people okay. too young and stuff. But like M A is the hard restricted one. Yeah. And then R is eighteen plus. As far as I know, like Americans they have like G and then there's PG thirteen where it is restricted to over thirteen. Hard restriction. And then there's really? and then their R is I think seventeen. And then there's N C seventeen, which is like or maybe R is even NC-17. harder. Yeah, I don't 100% no. I mean, so we don't this, live there. So only people over 8, 13 were allowed to watch this. Yeah. It was pretty gory. I can see why. Yeah. I get, well, the despite being scenes. one of the... Well, hang on. Despite being one of the few slasher films read at PG-13, whenever someone is stabbed, their bodies show no stab wounds when they reappear. The only character with blood stains where they had been stabbed has no holes in their clothing where the stab wounds would be. Mm, I still found it quite gory. I found it, I didn't find it gory so much as just generally violent. Yeah. Because every time we violent. see... like It wasn't like blood spot. We see like the maid in the bath. She's got mm. like a little bit of blood on her mouth and her, and her shirt. Mm. I guess it's gory enough him just seeing the blade and then knowing he's stabbing them and then seeing him wash blood off of it was was enough, to be fair. This is very, very generous. But, you know, you could say the stabbing kind of remind, remind Have you ever seen Bird with the Crystal Plumage? No. It's Dario Argento's first movie. And it's great. Like this, largely bloodless, but it's got some real spooky bits. And towards the end of the movie, there's a bit where the the, the killer with a knife is... It's it's also great because it's kind of more of a mystery than it is like a horror movie or whatever. Mm. He's going to stab and he like flicks his knife directly at the camera. It's so like startling and takes you so... It's so like visceral, even mm. though it's completely like bloodless, not gory at any point. It's great. It's really, really compelling. Mm. You could with a very generous read, argue that some of the stabby techniques in the filmmaking were kind of (laughs) Argento-inspired. That is what the director went on to claim after he listened to this episode of the podcast. (laughs) Also, I won't go through it, but there's there's so many, like, people in the goofs just pointing out some of the plot holes. Actually, maybe I'll do some of them. Oh, a small one, though, is that Ming-Na Wen's name is spelled wrong in the credits. Oh. Yeah. Let me go through some of these plot holes. Sure. Why wouldn't... These are ones written by people. Why wouldn't Donna lock the bathroom window when she found it open after waking from a nightmare of being attacked in the bathroom? There's an obsessed killer that killed her the entire family, then escapes prison three years later, kills her friends in order to get to her, and she still leaves the window unlocked? Simply does not make sense. True. (laughs) True. Um... <clears throat> also, Dunn doesn't really do anything to get herself saved. Like, she doesn't do anything remarkably clever. She just gets the detective to shoot him in the end. This is my inherent problem with this genre. She doesn't do anything. <clears throat> no. Um, she she's not a participant in this movie. She's riding this roller coaster. You know who deserved to be saved genuinely? I thought Lisa was an excellent character. Yes, I, w- Lisa I would was love great. to have seen her live because she fought for it. Uh, yeah, she did. She did. She yeah. did stuff. Yeah. And she was punished for it. Yeah. Um, There's also uh, Richard Fenton's disguise is hardly foolproof enough for him to get around undetected. He merely trimmed his beard, leaving some stubble, and cut off his shoulder-length hair to a buzz cut and wears a baseball cap. 
That's it. The authorities would still be able to recognize that it's him based on his build, face shape, and overall physical appearance alone. Even stealing the clothes of a bellhop would not be enough of a disguise, as his face is still exposed even then. It's really weird when Lisa sees him in the elevator and she's like, who is that man? Like, if you had a teacher and you saw them out in public, you would instantly, especially if they killed someone, um, would be like, holy shit, that's my fucking mathematics teacher from year 12. Like, she's still in high school. I can remember vividly how my teachers looked in high school, and it's been 10 years. It's been zero years because I'm 18 years that's, old. That's true. Um, I'll just do one more so that we can get to the reviews because we're running long. Um, how did Richard Fenton manage to hide all of the corpses so that they wouldn't be discovered by other guests and hotel staff? Hmm. Which I think is kind of true. I think it's implied at one point that they put them in the roof. And I don't know how he did that. That bit where, like, Claire gets killed in the bathroom, her boyfriend's waiting for her outside, and then the door opens and she's no longer in the room. I'm like, he just carried a body to a different room and he didn't hear, didn't see, and there's no blood stains anywhere showing that she got dragged. Yeah, it's craziness. It's nuts. And, yeah, he pushed a guy into the roof. Yeah. it's it's. it's How do you do that? Well, Idris Elba couldn't even get up to the roof yeah. without a ladder. And that's Idris Elba. That's Idris. That's El- that's the Elbs himself. That's Luther, man. That's the IE. What? Oh, Idris Elba. Yeah. Uh, do you want to hear a re- review? <laughs> yeah. Quick, quick. <laughs> Reviews. This movie has nine percent on Rotten mm-hmm. Tomatoes. Makes sense. And we are still in the three point nines on oh, IMDb. Going strong. Mark Olson of the Los Angeles Times said, This is as listless, mindless, and utterly useless a piece of corporate brain clog as one is likely to come across for quite some time. And he said that in 2008. He was like, this is just corporate brain mush in 2008. Buddy, it's going to get so much worse. (laughs) Buddy, it's not going to... It's not going to get better. It won't get better. Here's an IMD... IMD... Here's an... uh, Here's an IMDb Armin's? Re- Sorry. Armin, um, Ar- Armin's. Armin's? <laughs> Armin's. <laughs> got a case of the Armin's. Um, here's an IMDb review titled, Just Watched It by RVN Dash Good movie. To me, the previews weren't all that scary, but the movie was. Don't let the previews fool you. A lot of yelling. Tons of anticipation and eye-popping action. The actors are great and the obsessed killer was chosen greatly. Best man to play the part. He looked like the real deal. His face was just enough to be... Wow! (laughs) Brittany Snow was great. Nicely filmed, as said. Great angles. The scene was switched back and forth very nicely, although maybe some weren't needed. There were a couple of little corny things that happened, but it was good, smiley face. In some way, it reminded me of Flight Plan. How the guy has fooled everyone into thinking something else and plays out his hidings and tricks so smoothly. 10 out of 10. <laughs> like Flight Plan. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another IMDb review titled An Extremely Fun Suspenseful Movie by Robert... Sorry, by... By Robert Allen Anderson Jr. It's all smushed together, so it was mm. hard to tell where one name ends. I'm glad we got the full name, though. We needed it. <laughs> we needed it. Prom Night was very close to the best movie of the year. I honestly loved it so much. I thought that it was so suspenseful and hip. I loved the <laughs> sudden scenes that would make you jump. In my opinion, there were only a couple that got me jumping. The rest of the theater, though, every single five minutes they would scream and jump. The theater was getting very annoying. It was pretty hard to enjoy the movie listening to all the young teenagers scream and talk. So when you can enjoy the movie even with the young teens, it must be a good movie. It didn't even seem like a remake based on the original. I had seen the original one and it was very different than this one and had nothing the same at all. The whole entire cast was great. I loved the killer they chose for this movie who was played by Jonathan Sheech. He did a great job making himself look like what a real stalker would. Britney Snow did a very good job as well, surprisingly. Everyone thought she would do a bad job. Did they? Rude. I also thought I, I also thought she would, but she did a good job. She <laughs> didn't act like a dumb blonde. It was very different from what I expected, though. This is such a painful review. <laughs> I didn't think that the hotel they stayed at would be where the prom was held. This was a very fun movie to watch. I think mostly teenagers would enjoy this movie. Don't worry, we're in the third act of this review. Okay. <laughs> The st- is, this re- is this review under 90 minutes? Because that's all I care about. <laughs> the story was pretty cliche, but in my opinion, I liked the story a lot. Some of the visuals were pretty cool at the prom. If you want a lot of blood and gore, you won't like this. If you are looking for suspense and pretty jump out of your seat scenes, then this is the movie for you. It was amazing. Go see it. 
overall, I loved it. And I think that all the teenagers should see this movie. The only thing is if you look for the theater to be quiet, it won't be. 10 out of 10. Painful. <laughs> I hate that man. You didn't, you didn't like <laughs> Robert Allen Anderson Jr.'s? <laughs> I hope that's the only review he's cursed us with on IMDb. Because if we encounter him again, I'll scream. <laughs> Here's another IMDb review. I promise it's shorter. <laughs> Titled, My Favourite Movie Right Now, colon, capital D, by Rachie Stevens. Rachie Stevens. Rachie Stevens. Rachie, she, you, you can tell she's got a bit of sass. Yeah. She's a fun time. I'd get a beer with Rachie Stevens. <laughs> okay, listen here, mate. Whoever thinks this movie was bad is completely wrong. It was a very thrilling, awesome movie. It had a fantastic script, very good suspense, a very convincing killer. This movie is scary and engaging. You will understand why I say all this when you see it. Extremely terrific, scary movie, colon, capital D. But this film is great. And I feel I have a duty of source to tell you to give your money to Hollywood and encourage this kind of filmmaking. So many people have different outtakes on these. So many so many people have different outtakes on movies. <laughs> but I believe that everyone I have spoken to about has said that they thoroughly enjoyed it and found it extremely thrilling. 10 out of 10. Rachie, I don't care that you said outtakes instead of outlooks. I love oh, your vibes. Love everything about you. Let's get a beer. <laughs> you can email me. <laughs> at Rain and at zero four. Oh, no, no, no. Five, 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 five. <laughs> Here's my last review. Okay. Thriller Worth It by Hefurden. Hefurden? Hefurden. Hefurden. Or H. Furden. Okay. Hefurden. H. Furden. H. Furden is... <laughs> Thriller worth it. <laughs> I saw this movie by myself, and though my friends had said it won it want scary and was boring, I, however, thought the movie was good. The teacher definitely freaked me out every time he was gonna kill somebody. He was very creepy and dare I say, creepy and crazy. Donna and everyone else were innocent <laughs> victims in the whole ordeal. And I was actually shocked every time he killed someone. I was especially shocked when he killed the boys. But I understand in the teacher's twisted mind that anyone in the way between him and Donna would have to go. I can't believe, sorry, I was just reeling for a moment, but, going, but I understand. <laughs> I can't believe people said that some people said, sorry, I can't believe people said that some people said the movie was not scary because I was almost scared when, at the beginning of the movie, when Donna remembers her entire family died because of the teacher, I was almost scared and creeped out so bad. When one but, of the almost. <laughs> but almost. But <laughs> almost. <laughs> you weren't creeped out so, so bad. Just you're almost, almost. Bad. The gap between absolutely nothing <laughs> and so bad, it's, it's this thin. It's so thin. <laughs> um, when one of the detectives is detectives about... <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> When one of the detectives is detectives about Donna's <laughs> case with her past teacher and her family, it's scary how in how infatuated he was with Donna and what lengths he would go to be with her. You, what the fuck? Sorry, I have no idea what that was meant to mean. <laughs> Sorry, I'm breaking apart. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen you struggle through reviews before. <laughs> the fuck? Are you okay? <laughs> Detective is detectives. <laughs> <clears throat> you would think that he would somewhat have a mind to understand what a restraining order is and how to live by the rules, but no! Keeps going. Gets locked behind bars. Sent away to the loony bin. Interestingly, semicolon. <laughs> oh, they could use a semicolon? Yeah. Impressive. Hopefully that would that would say something like, or the way, I think when they say that, they mean the killer. Hopefully that would say something like, hey, I might be crazy, but I can fix it if I work at it. But he doesn't and gets the punishment he deserves. Jesus. Anyway, the movie was good, scary, shocking, and having me wonder if my teachers in high school ever had a crush or infatuation with me. What the fuck? 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the um, delusion of it all. What um, was your review about when detectives is detectives? Mm, well, it did make me wonder if any of my teachers from high school had a crush on me. Um, what a weird takeaway. <laughs> so it's just props not, to be honest, babe. Props not. Um, 
oh, look, I had more fun with this horror film than most that we do in this podcast because it actually had the semblance of a plot. And that's yeah. in this world that we live in, in this constant realm that we are placed within, uh, that's a huge deal. Mm. Uh, and it, it didn't bore me the entire time. Mm. And I did. I, I liked Lisa. So I liked one yeah, character. I, I kind of liked Lisa. Yeah. You know? You know, so I, d- I got partly in, but it wasn't painful. There are weeks where it's painful. Oh, yeah. It wasn't painful. That's where we're at. Notice notice all the giggles we've had. Yeah. It's because I'm in a good mood because it wasn't completely obliterated yeah, by watching Yeah, yeah. Even with the stabby stabby. <laughs> yeah. Didn't make Abby Abby too crabby crabby. Hey. Um, yeah, nice so on that note, there. I'll give it a 3.8 out of 10. I think IMDb kind of nailed it. Yeah. Close enough. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah. 3.8. Three point seven. Three point seven feels better. Three point mm. seven. I think like this movie. This movie was pretty chunky and mm. pretty pretty bad. And obviously, like the script fucking falls apart the moment you look at it or hear it. You know, mm. um, but the filmmaking could have been a lot. We've seen way worse filmmaking. Yeah, we have. Like this was no bye bye man or the apparition, which I think the apparition is one of our lowest. We gave it a zero and like a minus point yeah. two. Or so something. I can't, I can barely even remember this film. Oh, no, the apparition is the one where Sebastian Stan sees some mold oh, and is like, mold. what if it was a ghost? <laughs> the thing is with the horror films, they all have the same name. Basically it's like they the do. reckoning, the apparition. And it's just, I can't, I can't remember you, it. You throw in one word for being like moderately uncomfortable, yeah. maybe a religious word. And then like a vaguely dramatic word. And you, you and it's it. always got the same poster. I think that's what fucks me up. Yeah. What if like wounds as well? Wounds. Wounds. wounds yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that one had a different poster because there was the genre where it's a woman screaming, mm. as as started by Scream, but that did it this well. One, and then there's also one where like it's a woman and like hands are grabbing at her face. Yeah. I see that all the they time. They love the hands. They love the hands. Um. Then there's what if a thing looked really fucked up. Yeah. Or like someone's face is like falling off you know yeah, like someone's yeah. got holes in their face Someone, or something. yeah or their their hands or eyes partly or a skeleton <laughs> oh yeah they're a skeleton spooky little you know what prom night would have been better with a skeleton yeah oh for sure easy e- what an love, easy win I for them love to have a skeleton on board bro fucking mccormick nelson would have loved a skeleton i would have loved if it was just a bunch of skeletons having a prom you know that would have been cool skelly yeah. prom skelly prom yeah do you reckon they would do the monster mash yeah yeah or the mishmash okay what if what if it was prom night and some of them turn into werewolves Ooh. i mean because we've already watched when we watched cabin fever 2 what if at prom night people got really sick mm. well, the thing is michelle we shouldn't be pumping up the script without a paycheck it deserves no more of our time yeah that's true We've given it our reviews. That's it. Well, I haven't yet. Uh, 3.9. You're right. IMDb nailed it. That's it. 3.9. That's it. And since that's it, uh, I'm imagining if you've made it this far, you were like, what what an enjoyable time. I want to, how do I engage with more even? Well, you can find us on Twitter at Rate Descend Pod, on TikTok at Rating Descending, or you could email us at (laughs) ratingdescending at gmail.com. I love the emails, baby. Giggling because of the way you said, I'm imagining. (laughs) I'm imagining. (laughs) Same vibe as she's really got her head screwed on. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, I'm imagining. Uh, or you can find us on our personal accounts. I'm on Instagram under Abigail J. Ward. Um, and I'm, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Michelle Sinclair. Also, one thing I should add is you can, we also have a website. We've had a website yeah. for like a year now and I have never mentioned it. Oh yeah, we have a website. <laughs> We've had a website for like a year now and I've never once mentioned it. Um, but, yeah. you know, because people sometimes ask about the list and, mm. you know, about some questions and stuff. And we're setting up an Instagram. Yeah. We're, which will be with you shortly. You'll soon be able to find us on Instagram and YouTube as well. Yeah, we're everywhere. We're spreading like we're a disease. We're fucking everywhere. We're expanding, baby. The rating descending business. The, the concussion was just the beginning of my evil. Soon we're going to be CEOs, you know, of a, of a rapidly expanding rating descending empire. And if you love, 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 love this episode, um, you can leave us a review wherever you get your podcast because it makes a hell of a ton of difference to our lives to your lives to everyone involved you could feed a starving michelle with just one review please share please I'm it'll only dying. take a review every oh, month watch that five to- stars and oh. she won't die of malnourishment oh this month <laughs> armin's oh. armin's not more armin's <laughs> the, the stars turn into armin's <laughs> Well, you know, Abby. <laughs> this is craziness. <laughs> <laughs> that was from that. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> We're running so long for such a stupid video. <laughs> this does not warrant this length of episode. We just cannot keep it together. <laughs> We're right at the end. Come on, let's do this. Abby, yes, prom night. Yes. What are we watching next week? Next week, I actually looked it up. Oh, no, don't keep this in. I actually looked it up. Um, the next week we were, oh fuck, I forgot. Wait, I've got it right here. Next week we wait. Hang on, I've got it. I've actually got it. Fuck, and now I gotta keep all of this. Next week, <laughs> next week we've got you got served. Hey, you got served. <laughs> Made it. You did it. Uh, if if I'm correct from t- briefly glancing the poster and trying to find the movie for us, I think it's a dance movie. I think I saw it in cinemas. Like a like a hip hop. Really? Yeah, I think I did. Wow. Well, I saw a lot of those dance movies when so, they came out. So this is going to be one of the rare ones where instead of I've already seen it, you've already seen it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and I, I think I, like, because, I, I, yeah, do you remember that? Uh, it was the one with Antonio Banderas in it. We're at the end of the podcast, the la- by the way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll talk about it next week. See ya. Bye. Bye.